All right, the Bible says in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, 1 Timothy chapter 4. The Bible also says that we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices as 2 Corinthians chapter 2. So it's important to know that in the last days we are to be aware of what Satan's doing in our world so that we don't fall prey into his wicked system. Now, Satan, you must understand, he is known to be an ox cherub. So I taught that in class last time. So Satan, he is known to be an ox cherub. And that's the reason why Hans Satan will have horns on his head. That's where the idea came from. Because he is likened to the ox. Now, there's uh, some questions from people online, which is a legitimate question, is that they asked, isn't Satan in charge of the reptilian, uh, aquatic reptilian class? So they don't understand why he can be an ox at the same time. And before I was going to answer, I thought, you know what, I might as well teach this. So it'll save me more time from answering. Okay, so the thing is this, is that first we got to first establish the fact what Satan is. So let's start with Ezekiel chapter 10. And we read this in our last Bible study. But the verse shows at verse 14, And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub. And the second face was the face of a man. And the third, the face of a lion. And the, third, uh, the fourth, the face of an eagle. Okay, so you'll notice right here that there are four faces. The four faces that we're going to see right here, it is labeled as... Cherub, right? Is that what it said? Cherub. And then it said, what next? It mentioned about the eagle. And then it mentioned about the man. And then? Lion. Lion. Thank you so much. So these are the four categories. Now, when you compare that with Ezekiel chapter 1, we're not going to turn there for time's sake, but I showed you before. In Ezekiel 1, it gives the same category as these four creatures. So Ezekiel 10 is going to go hand to hand with Ezekiel chapter 1. And Ezekiel 1 it names these four cherubs. However, these four cherubs, I mean, excuse me, these four cherubims right here, it would say ox, eagle, man, lion. There's something different. When I said ox, eagle, man, lion, that means the cherub is the what? He is the ox. But who is known to be called the cherub? If you look at Ezekiel chapter 28, Ezekiel 28 shows that Satan is the cherub. He is known to be the cherub in Ezekiel chapter 28. Now, that's where we are able to figure it out, that he's definitely known to be the ox. Now, originally in heaven, go to Revelation 4. Revelation 4. There are four cherubs surrounding the throne. Now, if Satan used to be one of those cherub or cherubims, then that means right here, if he used to be one of them, then there, there were five. Okay, so there is one thing that's different right here. And what you're going to find out, the one thing that's different is the calf. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 4. And we'll read Revelation chapter 4 and verse 7. The first beast was like a lion. Mark, we got that. The second beast was like a calf. Okay, that's different. The third beast had the face as a man. We got that. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. We got that. Now, some people might say that this calf might be the same thing as the ox. However, there is a big difference with that. The big difference with that is because... If you look at the Bible, all you have to do is just search word calf and ox together in one verse. And then you're going to find out that the Bible separates those two animals. Not only that, scientifically speaking, there is a difference. Ox will have horns. The calf is different. It doesn't. Yeah. But not only that, this is very interesting. You'll notice this took place, this four categories took place when? Revelation what? Four. This is much later. And they're up in heaven, right? Well, Satan, he, one, he used to be part of the cherubims. Two, he's definitely not the calf because these are mentioned in Revelation 4. It's a good one. 
So then thus, there were five then. This is the missing. Amen. And this matches with Ezekiel 10 and Ezekiel 1, the ox. But if you put it as the ox, then it will make so much more sense why people would put, depict Satan with horns on his head. Now, here's another thing right here, is that when we look at these five classes of creatures, it's going to represent several different categories right here. The eagle is going to rep, uh, represent, we're going to go through the scientific classes of animals, all right, all of them. So we see right here the eagle covers the bird class. The birds are covered here. Man would cover the next class of creation. It would be humans. And then the lion will cover the next class of creature right here. It would cover uh, wild animals. And then the next part right here is covered, the calf. It would cover domesticated animals. So we can see right here these cherubims represents these class of creatures. Now, there's something missing, though. One, one part that's missing, you can guess, will be aquatic reptilian, aquatic reptilian types of creature. Thus, fish and reptiles. Amphibians, they're the in-between. So thus, Satan, we can say he is the perfect class of what we call aquatic reptilian creatures, or amphibian, or whatever you want to call it. So we see right here that Satan, he would cover that other missing class. So thus, this class is covered right here as the aquatic reptilian. Now, here's the thing is that this would make so much sense if you're familiar. If you're a conspiracy buff, then you're going to realize it truly lines up with the Bible then. Because with conspiracy buffs, they realize this one thing. There's a lot of things that connects with aliens or UFO weird stuff. But this alien and UFO weird stuff, why are they always likened to aquatic reptilians, they would say? Why would uh, certain people who worship aliens or people who are into theosophy will mention about the aquatic era as some kind of pinnacle era? See that? So you'll notice right here that this will match perfectly if we believe that these creatures are evil beings. They're demonic creatures. If we believe that they're demonic creatures, then it would make so much sense that it would match with this one. But not only that, Scripture shows Satan is aquatic reptilian. Because go to Isaiah chapter 27, and then we'll read verse 1. Isaiah chapter 27, you see that I wrote that out right over here. So Isaiah chapter 27, and we'll read verse 1. And then Ezekiel 10, I forgot the verse, so I apologize, so I'll put a question mark here. But in Isaiah chapter 27, verse 1, in Ezekiel 10, we can figure out, see, who is this cherub. And then by comparing that with Ezekiel 28, we get it. And not only that, it just lines up with all this stuff that's going on contemporary in our days. So when you combine current evidences of current events, as well as with scripture with scripture, that's why we believe that Satan, he's in charge of the aquatic reptilian class, and then he'll have also a face of an ox. So I'll explain why he has those two particular classes momentarily. But first let me explain this one. Go to Isaiah chapter 27. And we will read verse 1. In that day, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish who? Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. See that serpent? And this serpent is aquatic. It's an aquatic creature. It's in the sea. So we see right here that he definitely covers aquatic reptilian. But we saw that he's an ox because of Ezekiel chapter 28. But not only that, we see current events. Here's another interesting thing. If you're going to compare evidences with current events, why is there a lot of cattle mutilation with UFO sightings going on? So you see that? When you add the pieces of the puddle to puzzle together, then this is going to make sense. Why are alien crafts, when they've landed, that they would find these kind of weird cattle mutilations, cattle parts, stuff like that. Uh -huh. Why is that? Unless 
if you know your Bible, if you saw this originally, then it would add the pieces together. It would add the pieces together. So here's the thing right here is why is it that this one would be likened to this one? Because you got to understand this. Reptilian class can be within the cattle category in the Bible. You might say, how so? Go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, and then we'll go to Genesis 3. Genesis 1, Genesis 3. The Bible will give you all the answer that you need. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That book is not boring, folks. Amen. You might say, it's in Genesis 1 and Genesis 3. I never saw that in the Bible, Pastor. How does this reconcile this ox with the aquatic reptilian class? Well, just look at Genesis 1 and Genesis 3. Look what God considers it. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind. And cattle, is that what it said? Yep, cattle after their kind. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. So notice that the creeping creatures are within the category with the cattle when God created. But look at Genesis 3. You think that was all? Look at Genesis 3. That's even better. Look at Genesis 3. It's even better. It's very plain here. Yeah, see, you're, you're jumping ahead. See, you got it. Uh, why did you have to be a Bible believer so you can know that stuff? All right? Now, you just ruined the, you just ruined the momentum. Okay, so let's look, at, let's look at Genesis 3. Yeah, I, I remember I used to sit in churches, and then when the pastor would get on something, and I'd go, oh, it meant da 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 And the pastor's like, I was getting to that. You ruined the momentum. <laughs> All right, look at Genesis chapter 3. And then look at verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above what? All cattle. And above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So it's not a matter of what we think of which category. That's important. And it's not a matter of what scientists think of their category. So there are like five different classes of vertebrae, and then they add a invertebrate over there. But you got to realize this. Okay, scientists have their own category. Humans have their own category. We have our, our, our own thinking. But God has his own category. That's what he's thinking. What is God thinking here? That's the point. What God sees right here is that this, uh, the reptile class can go with the cattle right here. So that's why Lucifer, Satan, can have this. But here's another thing you got to understand. This is an easy answer when you understand this. Satan, as a cherub, he was a cherub above all other cherubs. He's a special class. In Revelation 4, these four cherubs, what do they do? They surround the throne of God. Now jump to Ezekiel 28. Go to Ezekiel 28. So you got these four cherubs that surround the throne of God. But here's the thing, is that there's still an opening. He's, God is surrounded, but there's still an opening. There's only one opening you can think of. That's the top right here. So behind, side, front, but then what about the top? There's got to be a special lid on top. Hmm. Look at Ezekiel chapter 28. So this was Satan before his fall, right? This was before his fall. And what did the Bible say concerning Satan before he fell. He was the covering. That's right. Boom, right there. Ezekiel chapter 28. We'll look at verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that what? Covereth. But not only that, it says anointed. Anointed has to do with the special heading. Yep. See, a head where you're anointed. He's an anointed cherub because it's all over God. But you see what happened. Now jump to Matthew 3. Jump to Matthew chapter 3. Now it makes sense, doesn't it, why Satan thought he can go higher yeah. than God? Yeah. He was always on top. Thus, at Revelation 4, the Lord didn't have anyone else on top. So when Jesus got baptized, Satan must not have been happy because who landed on top of Jesus' head? It's, it's, it was a certain winged creature, but it wasn't a cherub. It was the Holy Spirit as a dove. So God had to do the anointing. God had to be the covering on top. Satan, nope, no longer any other being. God can't trust anybody to be the covering on top. Look at Matthew chapter 3. 
Look at verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. See that? So it's only going to be God himself, no one else. So when Satan saw that, that's why immediately at chapter 4, yeah. Satan tempted Jesus in the wilderness. How about that? That book is way ahead, way ahead of our yeah. time. But not only do you see this weird UFO stuff connected to it, so we see current event, evidences of current event. We also see scripturally, but not only that, we see right here these pieces of the puzzle that are answered why Satan would do these things. Because if you know his history, then everything connects. The dots are connected right here. So this is Satan. But not only that, it makes sense why mankind would depict Satan. How would they depict Satan? They would depict him as a being with horns on his head and a red figure, like a dragon, see the red dragon, reptilian creature, and then as well as a serpentine tail at the end. See that? And not only that, he's got a cleft foot like an ox. Make sense now why cartoons might do something strange like this? Everything is clicking. Everything is clicking. So you see red reptilian, see, red dragon. That covers that uh, reptilian class right there, the reptile class. Horns, the ox, serpentine tail, cleft foot. Ah, makes sense.